Elephants are one of Africa's most iconic species. But in the last century, their population numbers have dropped sharply due to poaching. Yet there is hope for these grey giants. Two conservation tales are unfolding in the forests of Tembe and the thickets of Addo Elephant Park. These places offer an intimate look into the complex and compelling lives of the world's largest land animal. From a continent with many tales to tell, this is an elephant story. On the east coast of South Africa, not far from the Indian Ocean, lies a lush land of subtropical forests. Here, giants move like ghosts between the trees. Glimpses of their hulking frames come and go. Until they emerge from the forest, suddenly close enough to count the wrinkles on their skin. These are some of the biggest elephants in Africa. They live in Tembe Elephant Park, a place of towering trees and large stretches of woodland and savanna, providing shade, security, and most importantly, food. This group is one of the main breeding herds in the park. It's made up of 15 females and they're young. Like all elephants, they have colossal appetites. With individuals eating between four and 6% of their body weight daily. That's well over two tons of food consumed by this herd every day. Collecting this much food takes time, and the herd spends 16 hours a day feeding. Luckily, Tembe Elephant Park has ample vegetation for the hungry herbivores. It also provides other essential amenities for the elephants living here. This is the pachyderm version of a spa treatment. A mud bath fit for a king. No other land animal on the planet can match an adult male elephant in size. Standing four meters tall and weighing over five tons, this mighty bull is well on his way to being one of the biggest elephants in the park. His name is Zakade, which means 
he who takes a long time to arrive in the African language of Venda. He's 25 years old and at the beginning of mature adulthood. His ivory tusks, already several feet long, will continue to grow until he reaches 60. One day, they may even earn him the illustrious title of a tusker, which is the name given to bull elephants with exceptionally large ivory. But his tusks are a curse as well as a blessing for they mean there is a price on his head. In Africa, more than 100 elephants are killed every day for their ivory, meat, and body parts. Bulls with big tusks are the main target for poachers. Today, there are fewer than 40 tuskers left in the whole of Africa. Many of them are found here in Tembe Elephant Park. Located in the far east corner of South Africa, Tembe was created as a haven for elephants affected by the violence of the Mozambique Civil War during the 1970s. During the war, the animals came under attack. Poachers killed them for their ivory, which they then sold to fuel the fighting. Those that were able to escape did so by taking refuge in these dense forests. The area was later protected and now forms part of the 1,655 square kilometer elephant reserve. Those that did survive carried excellent genes. Tembe Elephant Park is now considered one of the best places in Africa to see a big tusker. There is another reserve with a different but equally important elephant conservation story in South Africa. Addo Elephant Park is located in the coastal region of the Eastern Cape, 1,300 kilometers from Tempe. Tembe's elephants are famous for their big tusks. Addo's elephant population is noted for quite the opposite. Many of the elephants in Addo have no tusks at all. The reason for this goes back to the beginnings of Addo's history. Hundreds of years ago, before Europeans arrived in Africa, the area that is now Addo was wilderness. Where elephants roamed free in large numbers. In the 1900s, colonial farmers arrived and put down roots. Crops were soon raided by the resident elephants, and conflict between man and beast escalated quickly. The farmers called for the government to exterminate the elephants, which they considered pests. A man named Major Pretorius was hired for this gruesome task. 
he shot and killed 92 elephants in under a year. Thankfully, the slaughter was called off before he could finish the job. By the mid-1900s, there were just 12 African elephants left in the Eastern Cape region. In 1931, forward-thinking conservationists set aside 2,023 hectares as a sanctuary for the last remaining elephants. This was the inception of Addo Elephant Park. Now, 85 years later, the population has boomed to over 600 elephants in what's now the third largest national park in South Africa, covering 180,000 hectares. The elephants of Addo are marked by their history. Today, only 5% of Addo's female elephants have tusks, and the males have much smaller tusks than those in places like Tembe. That's because the 12 elephants that survived Major Pretorius's cull had small tusks, or no tusks at all. All the elephants that live here today are thus descendants of the first 12. It's a stark reminder of how close they came to being completely wiped out. Besides the issue of smaller or non-existent tusks, the elephants of Addo are perfectly healthy, and they continue to breed and grow in number. It's a success story born out of adversity, that now points towards a viable new model for elephant conservation in Africa. To understand why the conservation of Africa's iconic elephants is so important, we need to look back to an Africa before modern man. Elephants have existed in Africa for five million years. They are wide ranging and highly adaptable, found across a variety of habitats. lush wetlands of the Okavango Delta, to the dry and barren wastelands of the Namib Desert, and many places in between. They've been present on the African savannas throughout mankind's evolution. Drawings of elephants are even found in ancient rock art, dating as far back as 30,000 years. These depictions often show them being hunted by early man. Indeed, we have a long and blood-stained history with elephants. Over time, arrows became bullets, and the lust for ivory skyrocketed. Developing cities and farmlands further reduced elephant migration routes and ranges. In 
in a few hundred years, the elephant population declined drastically. From an estimated 27 million in the beginning of the 19th century, there were just 410,000 wild elephants left in Africa in 2012. It's a grim picture. But it does not tell the whole story. We are now at a turning point in elephant conservation in South Africa. On the thicket covered hills of Addo Elephant Park, this family of elephants is living proof that in some places, populations are booming. In Addo, elephant numbers are actually doubling every 13 years. Over the decades, researchers here have come to know all the elephants in Addo. They are able to identify individuals by the shape of their tusks and the scars and holes in their ears. This is one of six major families in Addo. Like all the herds, it's made up of related females and led by a matriarch. She is the oldest and wisest of the herd. It's her job to keep them safe. She must make difficult decisions on a daily basis. Where to go in search of food and water and when to flee from danger. To do this, she draws on her years of experience and knowledge she learned from her mother. The bulls are more independent, preferring a mostly solitary existence. When they do meet other bulls, it's often to test one another through competitions of strength. In this way, the bulls in an area like Addo get to know each other. Learning through experience where they sit in the hierarchy of size and power. But regardless of age, size, or sex, all the elephants of Addo share the same voracious appetites. Elephants make a massive impact on their environment in their search for food. The combination of their mass, intelligence, and power makes them destructive feeders. An adult elephant can tear down a large tree with ease, using its immense strength and bulk to crack and splinter wood. In Addo, the impact of their feeding habits is clearly visible. In places, whole parts of the succulent thickets that should cover the landscape are gone. This loss is a concern. Many plant species in Addo are found nowhere else in the world. It's the double-edged sword of elephant conservation in South Africa. Maintaining viable populations of elephants threatens the safety of endemic plant species. Luckily, 
there is an abundant and fast-growing plant in Addo that the elephants love. The speckboom bush is a common succulent species with juicy green leaves that are high in moisture and mineral content. It's such an elephant favorite that the Afrikaans name for the plant is Olefantskos. Elephant's food. Speckboom is an indigenous icon of Addo, growing naturally in vast swathes throughout the park. It also has other benefits besides being elephant fodder. Speckboom is incredibly good at reducing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, with recent studies suggesting that it's 100 times more effective in carbon capture than a pine tree of the same size. Another elephant favorite in Addo is actually an alien species. This breeding herd has found a grove of prickly pears. The spiky cactus originates in the Americas, but grows so well in the South African climate that it is now considered an invasive plant. This is no problem for the elephants, and the prickly pear's sharp spines offer little resistance to their grinding molars. As the elephants eat, they smash whole trees of the invasive plant. The result is cactus carnage. These elephants are unwittingly acting as alien species eradication officers. Elephant conservation may have its challenges, but it also has unexpected benefits. Elephants are considered an umbrella species because by protecting them, we also protect large areas of wilderness and all the creatures that live there. Big and small. The flightless dung beetle was once widespread in South Africa. Today it lives in isolated populations, of which Addo's is the largest. This little character is intimately linked to the elephant and does a great deal of good for the environment with a bit of strength and a lot of tenacity. The beetle is a tireless recycler of nutrients back into the ecosystem. But when it comes time to breed, it's the female that does the heavy lifting. She makes a ball of dung that will be the home to her fertilized egg. Building the brood ball is the easy part. Finding a suitable place to bury it is more of a challenge. The ball is hundreds of times heavier than the beetle. Even moving a few centimeters can be incredibly difficult. Yet she soldiers on. She's got a long way to go. The ground is filled with obstacles. 
Heaving the ball takes gargantuan strength. Yet the dung beetle can perform this incredible feat, as it is the strongest insect in the world. Finally, she clears the hurdle and can roll her ball off to bury it. The dung beetle is an attentive mother by insect standards. But her commitment is nothing compared to that of an elephant mother's. Family is the core of elephant life. This herd in Addo is led by one of the oldest elephants in the park. At 60 years old, the matriarch is ancient. She's been a successful mother. The herd is made up of her many adult daughters and grandchildren. While her daughters and granddaughters will stay with her for their entire lives, her sons have left for a life outside of the herd. The young bull calves still with her will one day follow suit. It's the way of elephant life. These young bulls in Tembe have all recently left their families. They push and shove one another, acting much like an unruly gang of teenage boys. Male elephants reach sexual maturity at about 12 years old at which time they separate from their families. Sticking together in a bachelor herd offers company in their early years of independence. They, like all elephants, communicate much through touch. Using their trunks, they subtly feel each other's strength or show affection. Off to the side of the watering hole, two males stand together. Their tenderness towards each other tells of a special bond. Perhaps they were from the same herd, or are even brothers. Bachelor herds are common among elephant populations across Africa. They are an indication that there are plenty of healthy young males in the area. In times before human settlements, the bulls would have roamed hundreds of kilometers to stake out new territories of their own. But for the bulls of Addo and Tembe, Space is limited. And sometimes this can prove deadly. There are over 250 bull elephants in Addo. Each of them has a ranking in the dominance hierarchy, decided through tests of strength and aggression. Because they don't have the option of dispersing naturally, competition between bulls for mating rights is more intense.
In Addo, the primary cause of mortality in adult males is fighting to the death. Luckily, this is just a skirmish. Because of the potentially deadly nature of meeting an adversary, the older bulls of Addo often avoid each other, choosing to feed alone and visit the water holes at different times of day. few bulls in Addo that rule the top ranks due to their size and power. This is one of them. His name is John Kruger. He was named by researchers after being brought to Addo from Kruger National Park to broaden the gene pool of Addo's elephant population. Today, he's traveling with one of Addo's breeding herds. There's a reason that normally solitary bull is seeking company. He's here because one of the females is in estrus, which means she will soon be at her most fertile. If she accepts him, he will stay with her until she is ready to mate, fulfilling his destiny and bringing diversity to Addo's elephant gene pool. Genetic diversity is one of the greatest challenges for elephant populations confined to reserve areas. The successful relocation and mating of John Kruger is a major victory in the story of modern elephant conservation. In Tembe, the big bull known as Zakade is also looking to pass on his genes. But he's got a different strategy for finding a mate. wait at the waterhole and let them come to him. He's joined by a younger bull, but Sakade is too distracted to care. His desire to mate is strong right now. He's in an annual condition known as must. Must is a heightening of the testosterone levels of a bull, which increases the drive to breed. It also makes them more aggressive. This in turn makes them more dangerous and temporarily gives them a higher position in the dominance hierarchy. The telltale signs of must include a streak of fluid on the side of the head and the constant dribbling of urine down the hind legs. He's also giving off a pungent, musky odor. But his elephant cologne attracts no attention from the breeding herd, who have just arrived and are more interested in drinking than his amorous odor.
Zakade moves around the waterhole, testing the air for the subtle smell of pheromones. He's smelling to see if any of the cows are ready to mate. Scent is very important to elephant communication. Their trunk is actually a long prehensile nose and is extremely sensitive. Zakade's out of luck today. There are no females in estrus. He settles for a drink instead. The most recently born calf in Tembe is also at the waterhole. Born less than six months ago, he weighs only a hundred kilograms now but may one day grow into a six-ton giant. Together, he and Zakade represent the full cycle of life for these majestic mammals. Slowly, the cows and their young start to move off, while the big bull chooses a direction of his own. Another male arrives after the last of the herd have left. At 17 years old, his solitary adult life has just begun. Soon he'll hit a growth spurt that will last until he's 25. In these years, he'll get much bigger and stronger. His tusks will also continue to grow. In 10 years, he'll be ready to challenge bulls like Zakade for one of the top spots in Tembe. While Tembe's woodlands provide extensive cover from the sun, in Addo, the elephants have few places to hide from the heat. all the families towards the waterhole and offers a chance to see the park's conservation success in full force. Today it seems as if all of the herds are arriving at the water at the same time. One after another, the elephant families pour in. Some of the youngsters are so excited, they do the last stretch at a run. Elephants can drink up to 200 liters of water a day, and this water hole is the only one in the area big enough to accommodate all these massive thirsts. The visit to the water hole is not only important for drinking and catching up with old friends, it also allows for another daily ritual, a good splattering.
the elephants cover themselves liberally in water and mud. This helps protect their surprisingly sensitive skin from the harsh sun, as well as trapping ticks and parasites when the mud dries. The adults are able to aim their mud slinging with remarkable accuracy, landing each trunkful on a different part of the body. Youngsters, however, haven't quite mastered the 150,000 odd muscles in their trunks. That will come in time. From the distance, a massive figure emerges. It's Addo's most dominant bull. His name is Terry, and he's 34 years old. At the zenith of his physical prime. He was named by the resident elephant researchers in Addo who can easily identify him by the large hole in his ear, which is likely a war wound from fighting with another bull. Maybe it was even this battle that secured him the top spot on Addo's dominance rank. Whatever the case, he is now considered the most powerful bull of all, and is treated with respect. Terry has come for more than a drink and a shower today. Once he's freshened up, he moves over to a young cow. Even though she's fully grown, he towers over her. He can smell that she's fertile right now and he's eager to get to know her better. There are other bulls hanging around and he doesn't want her to wander off. He herds her gently with his tusks. he's made his intentions clear. And she reciprocates the interest with a playful nudge. This is the last phase of their courtship ritual. A bull elephant's penis is normally enclosed in a sheath, then released for urination and mating. Because of its substantial proportions, it is often referred to in Africa as an elephant's fifth leg. Elephant mating is an astounding sight, not often captured on camera. It's the consummation of the complex circle of life for the world's largest land mammals. The cow now carries the seed of the biggest bull in the territory, 
and her future offspring is ensured the best possible start to life. Slowly, the families begin to disperse. With thirsts quenched and desires sated, the elephants can go back to the rolling green hills. They will meet again one day soon. By studying the African elephant, we are afforded a compelling look into the life of another of Earth's most intelligent mammals. As a species, they still hold many secrets, and scientists are just scratching the surface of understanding how their communication and social lives work. They are the most powerful land mammals on the planet. Yet they need our help. Poaching and habitat loss have put their future in jeopardy. But parks like Addo and Tembe are examples of how we can turn the tide. The story of the African elephant is one of great beauty and sadness. It's also a story of hope, where the final chapters have yet to be written. How it ends is up to us.